And Thomas might have said, to begin at the beginning, or is the beginning of truth or fake. Good to see you, sir. How are you? Well, thank you. James has started with claims online, and this is pretty gruesome and serious it is, stuff, isn't it? Russia using mobile crematoria, crematoriums, pick your plural if you wish, uh, in order to manage the scale of casualties in Ukraine. Um, and also, I suspect, to cover up any um, proof of war crimes. That's right. So... Are they on the ground? Uh, we don't know for sure. Have they used them in the past? It appears so. Right. So there's some some basis in truth, at least historically, in the idea of mobile crematoria. Mm. Lovely, uh, lovely stuff, uh, cheerful stuff. Uh, but in any case, it is war, and all of the details are grim. And so there there have been images of this during the rounds. Uh, various media you can see there. You know. It looks like it could be a mobile crematorium. It's a truck doing the rounds, lorry, if you will. And uh, this is a media in Belarus talking about what's going on in Ukraine, saying uh, the mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Boychenko, said today that Russian mobile crematoria have started operating the city. He did say that, as did and the, the mayor of Kiev came in to back it up, if you like, or, or to give, lend further credence to the idea. Um, and the idea being a huge amount of casualties some, some, you know, counts putting it in the tens of thousands and that this would be in a bid to sort of manage that or indeed hide that. So uh, certainly it would, it would seem to piece together with what a narrative, the narrative uh, is. Uh, but uh, inconveniently, if you do a, a reverse image search, uh, it uh, brings you back to a, a whole range of articles showing uh, this image with the same claim, actually, going back to 2015, about previous Russian activities in, in the east of the country. But anyway, the original video is this one, and it's from 2013, and this is quite simply um, waste disposal. It's it's for thermic, the, 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 the legend in, uh, if you if you to literally tr translate it, installation test for thermic destruction or incineration of biological waste. So nothing to do with war uh, and nothing to do with the current events and... Uh, uh, there you go. So that's that's that. Now, uh, our journalist did speak to um, Next uh, TV uh, to get their reaction to all of this. And they said, look, we were just using it for illustration purposes, which is, isn't the best defence. And they said, oh, we're not the only ones who used it. Uh, they also used it in certain UK media at the time of uh, the defence um, secretary there, Ben Wallace, saying that the Russians have used such vehicles in the past. Apparently a Telegraph article did use this image also. Telegraph? So, apparently. Daily According Telegraph? According to Next... Uh, the Daily Telegraph? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, but in any case, uh, Next, to, Next to TV used that as their sort of uh, defence. The tweet is still up online, uh, so they haven't, despite admitting that it's not a, a factual image, uh, removed it. So there you go. Now, with the facts, we don't know. It's a grey zone. Uh, but that image is not a faithful... Uh, depiction of what has been claimed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. James, uh, next false claims uh, attri attributed to the uh, BBC, uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC News, mm. uh, related to uh, the missile strike at Kramatorsk railway station. This is the one uh, last week killing at least 57 uh, civilians. That's right. Um, so ex explain this one, because I think it's best leaving this to you. All right, well, so there was a, there was a missile strike on a train station in uh, the Ukrainian town of uh, Kramatorsk, 57 at least mm. dead. Uh, the Donetsk region governor, uh, Pavlo uh, Kirlenko, uh, gave that figure. Uh, many, many wounded as well, at least 110. In any case, grisly stuff. And, um, you know, it, it would seem pretty preposterous that the Ukrainians would, would fire a missile into one of their own uh, train stations. Uh, they have blamed the Russians. The Russians have said, not at all, it's the Ukrainians did that. So it's claim and counter claim, uh, some more credible than others. In any case, uh, various uh, journalists, uh, including uh, one, um, I'll, I'll try to find the tweet in question that, that shared the video I just showed you there. Uh, this is a Russian journalist, Alexander Bunin. They referenced this BBC story about Ukraine, a Ukrainian missile. Now, in the video that I, I was playing just a moment ago, they were talking about serial numbers on the missile found uh, in uh, Kramatorsk that matched serial numbers in previous Ukrainian attacks, therefore correlating the, I suppose, the, the, the missiles and the origin of the missiles, uh, except, so all of that seems very credible, especially when you look at the logo uh, of the BBC uh, on that particular uh, digital video there, uh, and the graphics, all of that co corresponds to BBC graphics, etc., except, uh, oh dear, the BBC uh, said, actually, uh, that's nothing to do with us. Uh, I'll try to find the BBC tweet. Here it is. Uh, we are aware of a fake video with BBC News branding suggesting Ukraine was responsible for uh, last week's missile attack. 
BBC is taking action to have the video, video removed. So there again, you, if you're crafty and skilled with graphics and all that, it's pretty easy to doctor a video like that. And the BBC obviously gives, uh, stamp gives credibility to the claim. Indeed, and, uh, and Russia does have a track record of manipulating these kind of things and putting out some kind of fake news in order to manipulate the people who are reading it. Because if Russian media say it, will, the people will doubt it, but if, 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 if I suppose, independent, uh, quote-unquote, media say it, or at least uh, media not from in, in the, within the Russian sphere yeah. say it, it gives additional credibility to like the claim. Say, James, thank you very much indeed. James, the truth or fake. Great to see you, sir. Thank Likewise, you for throwing some light on those grey areas uh, of news uh, and the internet and that the advice we can give everybody is to watch a credible news source. Please watch us, but obviously make sure if you watch another one that it is credible. That's the main thing, the place we people try as journalists to get it right, because that's what we have to do. It's our duty to do that for you, wherever you are. James, thank you. Brian, thank you. You at home or wherever you're watching, thank you too. Stay with us. More to come. Life in Paris.